In this video, we're going to go over how you can animate images using Comfy UI and Animate Diff. And here are some examples of an image that I did. Before we dive in, if you would like, comment, and subscribe, that would be incredible. And without further ado, let's go. If you haven't already watched my video on how to install Comfy, I recommend that you go watch that video and do that bad boy and then come back to this one because I'm not going to be going over everything. So first things first, we need to go to my website and download the Comfy workflow for image to animation workflow. So you just download this image of Starry Night and, you know, just do a right click, save image as, and then you're going to go ahead and start Comfy. And you're going to go ahead and drag that image into Comfy here. And you're going to get a similar workflow to this. And if you have any red boxes, of course, go ahead to go down to Manager and install Missing Custom Nodes. And once that's done, then you are going to need to restart Comfy. Now, before you restart Comfy, you can go ahead and close it. But we need to download some other models and things. So first thing, if you don't have them, are the Animate Diff Motion Modules. So you're going to go ahead and download that. And once you've downloaded those, you're going to go to Comfy UI. Then we are going to go to Custom Nodes, Animate Diff Evolved Models. And you go ahead and put those in there. And so there might not be all the ones that I have. These are some other ones as well. But that's where you're going to want to place them. Then next, we have the Enemy Diff Motion LoRa's. And we're going to go ahead and download those as well. And it's almost in the same spot, but instead of models in the Enemy Diff Evolved, you're going to go to Motion LoRa and put those in there. Next up, we got a lot of stuff to download, but it's not too bad. We have the IP Adapter Plus SC15 bin. So we're going to need that for uh, this portion right here for the load IP adapter. And you're going to go ahead and download that. You can just download it by clicking on this download button right here. And once you've downloaded it, you're going to have to give me a moment because I always forget where these are supposed to go. And uh, let's see, not there, but we're going to go to um, IP Adapter Comfy UI, Models, and then that's where you're going to place that. And there's a, there's a few different ones, uh, but you're going to place that in there. And it was a dot .bin. Um, but you can change it to dot path and that works. Um, I believe dot bin also works, but I just changed it to path. And then the last thing we got to do is download this uh, model bot safe sensors, which is really IP adapter vision SC15. Why they called it model dot safe sensors, I do not know, but I would personally rename it. And this is in a little different spot. So we, you're going to go to Comfy UI, you're going to go down to models. We're going to go to Clip Vision, and it's going to be put into here. Just go ahead and rename it to IP underscore adapter underscore vision underscore SD 15 dot safe sensors. So I'm going to explain the workflow right now. And so we just have our basic our, our checkpoint, VAE, and the animative floater. You have, of course, you can have different options. I find just the SD V15 V2 works really well. We have the animative or loader for the different movements of these, which we loaded in earlier. I personally don't really love them, but it's an option. And if you want to use them, you can just drag and drop this. If you didn't want to get rid of that, you can just click left click and delete. We have our clip vision and IP adapter. Generally, I just always keep this as is. And then for this, I did play with face a little bit, but I didn't find it to be very good for what I was trying to do. So this basic one works really well for me. We have our prompts here, and it's just because we're only animating one image, I find that this works fine. Um, and I just have this prompt of man, painterly, Van Gogh style, paint, starry night, crescent moon, high detail, sharp focus, smooth. And that worked out really well. And we have our big negative prompts here. Of course, you can also use embeddings. And we have our weights. So with these weights, specifically with like starry night, I found that 0.95 and 0.05 to make one uh, worked really well. That's not always the case. I found other values work better for other things. So make sure that you play around with these. And I will be showing some examples of how 
things change with the weights. We can load in our image here by just dragging and dropping. And we have our animation and resolution and frames. Now, I got this notebook, uh, part of it anyway, from Nerdy Rota, and I adapted it specifically for image animation. Now, within this animation, resolution, and frames is that I find that um, if I tried to go much higher than this, it would fail. I have a 4090, and it would just fail all the time. But 512 by 512 works super good. And I've done a batch size of up to 400 and had no issues. So and it didn't break the animate diff. So that was really cool. And then we just have our case sampler with all of our normal stuff in here. I find 0.75 works fairly well. Um, depending on what you're playing with, you know, might be 0.75, might be 1. Really kind of pick your poison. I have found that when I did it on one with some um, images that you'll see in a bit, that they were really dark for whatever reason, and I don't know why. So just be aware of that. And then for this, I found that uh, control net works really well just to kind of keep the image together but still allow for movement. And I find that canny is better than soft edge for this because I want it to be kind of a rough um, outline but not a, you know, very rigid one. And I, you know, try out some other, feel free to try out some other ones as well. But I found that canny worked pretty well for this. And I think this came together really nice with 50 frames. We're at a uh, frame rate of 15 and at uh, we're in MP4. And what I find is I like to run it like this first make sure I get what I like. And then if I want to upscale it, we can, it will go through the upscaler as well. If you want to bring these in, I will just do a set group nodes to always, and that will bring these in. And then if you, you know, you can go ahead and run this and do what you like. And then if you want to take these out again, you can just right click and bypass group nodes. And then that will hide all of those again. And it makes it pretty easy to kind of play with. So, because upscaling takes a while, so that's why I like to just kind of do that separately. And now I'm going to show you some examples of stuff that I've run through, just so you get a better idea of, you know, how this works for me and how it might apply for you. All right, so first things first, we have this as our base image, and I am using the Nangajala model for this and I'll be switching between different ones just to kind of show you there's not a huge difference between the two. Now we have three images here. We have images with no control net, with a control net, and with different IP adapter plus and IP adapter face. The the weight is the same for all of these and they're all a fixed seed. And you can tell that they all don't really look like each other and or the base image. When using IP adapter it does change a little bit what it looks like at least when it comes to people. And with this control net, I'm not using preprocessor, but I found that it doesn't really matter, or at least in the cases that I did this. Generally, IP adapter face is used, or at least from what I've seen, of when you generate an image and you want the your, you know, the image of the face of the person you want to be on the image just automatically, that's what it's really good for. And I thought that maybe, you know, with anime diff, it would work really well with the faces and keeping it consistent. But it, it honestly just changed the entire animation just a whole lot more than I wanted. So it's not something I'll really be using in the future very much. Next, we have a vaporwave water smoke portrait that I did with the deliberate model. And this is the base image that we're going to be using for the next animations. So for these animations, it's very similar to the Van Gogh uh, Man one. And we have similar weights and IP adapter weights. We have a couple different models in here, just Nangajela and Deliberate, just to kind of see the differences here. And again, like I don't like IP adapter face at all, but I found that using either model worked fairly well. And these are, I think they're just 20 to 50 frame repeats. So, but I think overall, uh, I was pretty happy with the motion that came out of these. So next up we have the IP adapter plus at 0.4 on both. We have it at 0.85 on both, and the control that's the same, but the model is different, just so you can kind of see that even though it's a different model, like it still works fine, even with the same settings and everything else. Now, when I use the IP adapter plus at 0.8, 0.85, with no control net on deliberate, 
and then at point 0.4, point 0.85 with control and with the Nangajala, you can kind of see the differences that it it, it seems that with the Nangajala one, with that control, it does limit the movement some, but not a lot. But it really kind of depends on what kind of movements that you're going for, if you want more or less. And if you don't have to control that, it's going to be more up to chance. As you can see here, the settings are basically the same, except for the control nut. One has it, one does not. Without the control nut, you can see there is more movement, but maybe less coherency. And with the control nut, it keeps the coherency a little better, but there's not as much movement. So take it for what you will. Now we're gonna move on to the starry night images here. And you can see that when I don't have a control nut in this landscape style thing, it gets pushed to the left. And when I do have a control nut, it keeps it more in place and it kind of makes it easier and, they, and the buildings are moving. And I just love the way that that works. And again, this is without a preprocessor. And we're at 0.95 and 0.15 for this. Uh, if I use some other, you know, like 0.4 and 0.85, it didn't work as well. I found this to be the one that worked best in these settings. So you're gonna, you're really gonna have to play with each image and see what works best for you. Then we have the Laura motion models. And these are all in the same settings as the previous animation that I did with these, but I'm adding a lower motion to it. We have the pan right and pan left, and we can kind of see the motion that's going on in there. And these are just one second clips. So if you change, it's going to be different. You can see with the up and down, you can really see that up is bobbing up and down, and that changes if you make it longer. Then lastly, we have the rolling clockwise and the anti-clockwise. And that just kind of gives you another idea of what this will look like with a landscape. And that's going to be it for this video. If you enjoyed it or you learned something, comment, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I hope to see you in the next one.